Welcome back to the Double M Innovations Channel. In this video, I'm going to do a few more experiments and talk a little bit more about using wood as an energy collector or an antenna or whatever you want to call it because I was picking up more energy if the conductor was attached to wood than if it was by itself. I'm sitting here alongside some high voltage power lines. I'm off the easement. I've been doing little experiments out here probably for almost six months and I pick up little bits of energy from the EM fields radiating off these power lines. You know everything is less than a, a watt. I mean you're not going to be powering your house like some people think and get real excited about but you know it's just a curiosity. But in that past video a lot of people were kind of confused about using wood. I mean wood is a non-conductive right? <laughs> well there are some natural electrolytes in it and if there's some moisture just the humidity from the air I think it does conduct some electricity a little bit you know these just these trees behind me they conduct a lot more they're grounding a lot of the EM fields but they got a lot of natural electrolytes in it and they're nice and juicy but wood especially if it's dried to the touch or kiln dried you know it's like well how can you use that as conductor well I'm not quite sure how it works. I, maybe the moisture in the air and the humidity. I'm not exactly sure what the wood is doing to affect it, if it's absorbing energy and reflecting it back into the conductor. But I would encourage you to watch through this whole video, especially if you want to know more about what I've been doing. Refer to my past videos. I've been out here, like I said, like six months doing this, and I would encourage you to watch them, you know, to get an understanding. Because I know if I see some of the comments in there, I can tell people didn't watch the whole video or they don't have any idea what's going on out here. You know, I'm not making stuff up. I'm not lying. You know, that's that's not in my character. I'm just showing you as it is. And I'm just having fun doing these experiments. For the first experiment, I'll just be using this plain piece of pine lumber. Um, it's just, I'm it's probably SPF spruce pine fir. There will probably be some natural electrolytes inside it. It's not treated with any vinegar or anything. Made in USA. And we'll see if that pulls in any electricity from the EM fields off these power lines. And I'm not going to run any wire on it. I'm just going to pound a nail in it. And I'm going to use this stainless steel nail right here. And first I'll just try the nail and the lead clip on the meter and see what we're getting. I'll hold it up about where that wire was. I was shown in the other videos. It's about right there. The wire is down so it's out of the way because I was doing other experiments further on down in the open. And we are getting... It looks like about 50 volts. Fifty to 49 volts, 50. So now I'll pound the nail in the wood and I'll just hold that up there. I'll try to hold it up by the clip lead. It's kind of a big piece of wood, but we'll see what happens. Well, I have the nail in the wood now. And before, like I was showing in the other videos, it, it is just attached to the ground, so it's just a connection between the ground and the wood. And I'll hold that up in the air by the clip lead. It was strong enough to hold it. And I'll hold it up the height of where that nail was before. And uh, we're getting about 135 volts, 137. It's turning a little bit, but it's not, I'm not touching it. I'm hanging on to the clip lead. Two-by is moving around a little bit. Yeah, about 130 volts. So, picked up 80 volts just from the wood. I'm sure this is kiln-dried wood. It's dry to the touch. You know, I'm, just the natural electrolytes in it are conducting some more current through it. You know, like these trees. All these trees here are grounding out the EM fields from those power lines. The 
This is an untreated pine 2x2, two, two, two points of contact. And voltage we're getting off of that. Now I'm going to add a couple more points of contact, a couple more nails. Added two more points of contact on that 2x2, two, two, two more nails, and voltage did go up. So the nails do have some meaning. More nails seem to have more output. Now I'm going to try to vinegar this board and see if that takes it up any. Same 2x2 two two board, four points of contact, put vinegar on it, a little bit damp yet. And that's the most that you're getting out of it. Right? So vinegar did jump it up some, not incredibly a lot, about 20 volts if I get further away. Let it dry and then see what happens. Two by two is now dry. I've been sitting on here quite a while, completely dry to the touch. I imagine there's still a amount of moisture in there though. Let's we'll see what the voltage reading is right now. And let's say it's kind of similar to what it was when it was wet. Closer, further away. Very similar to what it was when it was wet. So even though it's dry, completely dry to the touch now, it seems to be behaving the same as when it was wet. Okay, I'm going to put a whole bunch of points of contact now along the top of that board and see what that does. Now I have 12 points of contact in this little 2x2. Two two. It's 4 feet long. Let's see what that did. See if that increased it any. And it did. Went up some, maybe 6 volts maybe. Not a whole lot. I can try backing up again. That might do it. So I jumped it up some, maybe 6 to 8 volts, I suppose. I'm going to do a little test comparison here. Um, I have a wire strung on this board. I showed it in another video. I have that same length of wire just stretched out in between these two garden stakes. This is all plastic. And first I'll test the voltage on this one and then we'll compare it between the one I have on the board. And so I'll first I'll grab the lead. The red is connected up to a ground and this is the voltage just me holding the lead up in the air. See we're getting voltage just from that, and now I'll, I'll connect it up to the wire on the pole, and get about 142 right there, just connected there in the end. And now we're going to compare that with this board, and I'll make sure it's about the same height. I had it up here before, it'll just be on these little spacers so I can get it about the same height. You go ahead and do that. So now I have the board up here, approximately the same height as the wire. Well, when I set the board up there, we did get a little more voltage on just the bare wire. It's in the vicinity of the board. So now I'm just going to switch it over just to the board. And what do we got? 
287. So I'm taking it up very significantly. back over to the wired, bear wired, this put the board in there. I'll take the board off too. Because it seemed like with the board there it did jump up some. I'll just reach over here and take that board down and see what happens. Took the board down and the voltage went down. So just having the board in the vicinity of the wire will raise up the voltage on the bare wire. So that's pretty interesting. I guess it is almost doubling it. Someone also asked me if they thought maybe just that zigzag design on the board might have been causing the increase. So what I did is I took that piece of styrofoam and the same length of wire again. All these experiments right here with the wire, it's the same wire and the same length. And now I put the same number of nails in the styrofoam and almost in the same places too as the board. And I'll stick that up there to compare. I might have to stick a rock up there in order to keep the wind from blowing it away, but we'll get a comparison. And this is just the wire by itself right now. It does vary, it seems. Well, the sun's out now. I don't know if that's changing anything. See if it'll stay there. And now I'll just switch over to the styrofoam. Try to balance it there a little bit. And you get a little bit increase there just with the styrofoam. Nothing like with the board though. And it is about the same height. Actually the wire on the poles actually can be a little bit closer into the energy fields off the, the power line. The board's a little bit, or the styrofoam's a little bit further away. But it, it seems like just the styrofoam increased it a little bit. I'm going to stick a rock on there and hold that down to see if it changed anything with the rock. With the rock up there, I don't think it changed anything. I'll just switch back over to just the wire again. I'm about standing in the same place. I know with any of these experiments, if I back up, the voltage will rise. So that's just the wire right now. Looks like it went down a little bit from when we were doing it before. I don't know if that styrofoam might be influencing a little bit. I don't know. Then I'll switch back over to the styrofoam. I know when I put that wooden board up there, it affects the output. But no, the styrofoam is putting out a little bit more voltage than just the bare wire. It could be because the nails are in there too. There's no nails in that bare wire across the between the poles. But maybe it could be the nails, but it's nothing really that significant but I think this kind of shows that the board is putting out more oh I've probably done a hundred experiments out here that I didn't show I didn't check the current on that 2x2 two two. Uh, just from experience I know that the higher voltage leads to a higher current and the lower voltage to a lower current I did test out a green treated board with and without vinegar. The vinegar didn't make a bit of difference on that. 
and I suppose the green tree that already had a stronger electrolyte in it. You know, vinegar is just acetic acid, and it's just a weak electrolyte, and it was actually just a weak solution too. It did make a bigger difference on a cedar board, a dry cedar board, the vinegar had a bigger effect on it, greater than pine board. Um, I suppose maybe it's just because the cedar is more porous, I know it's more lighter, so maybe that was the difference there. One other thing I'd like to address a little is the concern that some people have about the legality of what I'm doing. I don't have the least bit concern. When I talked with the power company about this power line, I can put a fence right underneath the power line if I wanted to. And of course the fence is grounded out. You know, if I ground it out through a circuit or directly through the ground through steel posts, this is going to affect their loss any differently. And then what I'm grounding out is just milliwatts. But where I'm experimenting now is outside the easement and outside the terms. I can plant trees here and I have, I, there are trees growing here and they'll be grounding out any energy fields that are reaching them. And I can even build a metal building here if I wanted to and it would be grounding out any electric fields that would be reaching that. So I really don't have any concern in what I'm dealing with. Like I said, it's just milliwatts, it's nothing. Now when people are trying to steal electricity, they want to get right up by the power line itself, real close contact, and they try to disguise it and stuff, and you know, that's not what's going on here, so I'm not the least bit concerned. And if you made it this far through the video, thank you very much. And I'll leave you with a little clip of something I noticed when I was testing a vinegar soaked board with some wires on it. I just put it up on the ladder. And it looked like it was charging up. The voltage just kept climbing. You can take a look at that now. This board has been sitting on the ground all night. They just put it on top of these ladders. And it's been charging up. It's dry. The board is dry to the touch. It started out at 340 volts when they first put it on top of the ladders. And now it's charging up. It's up to 400 and... 20 volts and it's rising on its own and I'm not moving or anything so I don't know if ions are collecting around it or maybe there was some moisture that's evaporating off, but it's dry to the touch, so I don't know. The ground is usually negative, and the air positive, so it almost seems like it's charging up in the positive ions. But that's just speculation, I guess. I'll leave it here and see what it goes up to.